Haworth formulas are a way to draw the cyclic hemiacetal structure of a sugar showing the relative stereochemistry and cis-trans relationships without the complication of the chair conformation and its associated axial and equatorial positions. Haworth formulas are used a lot when drawing the structures of sugars, especially in biochemistry books. So we need to understand what they look like and how they are drawn. Okay, so here is our familiar structure of beta D-glucose in its chair conformation with all of the substituents in their equatorial positions. And here is the Haworth formula, also called a Haworth projection of the same molecule. Okay, so how does it work? Well, first of all, we draw the ring as an ordinary planar hexagon with, and you put the points onto the side. So you have a flat line on the top and flat line on the bottom. If you look at this hexagon, you could kind of see that we're looking down on it a little bit at an angle. We're not looking straight down onto it. So that's sort of the way that your eye is looking on down at the hexagon. And we're gonna put the oxygen at the top right position, just like it is in the chair conformation. So on every carbon then, we're going to draw a line straight up if that group is above the plane of the ring. It does not matter if it is axial or equatorial. If it's going up, it gets a line straight up and you draw a line straight down if that carbon is below the plane of the ring. Okay, so in this projection, it's easy to see that the OHs at carbon 2, carbon 3, and carbon 4 are mutually trans to each other. Looking back at the chair conformation, at carbon 2, the OH is equatorial, but it's equatorial down. It's down and out, remember that? And then at carbon 3, the equatorial position is up, and at carbon 4, the equatorial position is down and out again. So yes, these are really equatorial. You can't look at a Haworth projection and immediately know without drawing it out in the chair conformation if it's axial and equatorial. That's not what this projection is useful for. This projection is most useful for showing cis and trans relationships, especially at the anomeric carbon. Okay, because it's also evident that the OH at the anomeric carbon and the CH2OH substituent on C5 are cis to each other. And that is the rigorous definition of beta. Okay, so you remember in the last lesson, we said that beta, it's occupying the equatorial position and alpha, it's occupying the axial position. The rigorous definition is that the OH on the anomeric carbon is cis to the carbon substituent on carbon five. And then if we look at the alpha anomer and look at its Haworth formula, everything is exactly the same except for the anomeric carbon. And in this case, for the alpha anomer, the anomeric carbon and the CH2OH on C5 are trans to each other. Okay, so we're gonna be talking in the next lesson about something called glycosides and that will lead us into a discussion of how disaccharides are put together by linking together monosaccharides. And in order to understand that, we have to understand whether a linkage is alpha or beta, and it's usually easiest to see these things by using the Haworth projection.